Hello and welcome to Ellen Ruth Soap. I'm Ellen and today I am making a really special soap. Uh, I did one about a year and a half ago. Well, it's time to make baby breast milk soap again for my daughter. Um, she has an abundance of milk. She is breastfeeding her baby exclusively um, and she just has a ton of milk. Actually, she just started giving a little bit of food to my granddaughter. So cute, oh my word. I'll show you pictures later on. Anyway, she had some older breast milk in her freezer that she gave to me and asked if I would make some soap for her. So I'm gonna be formulating a very gentle bar of soap and uh, I'm gonna be using these little heart molds. I think I got this at Aldi's or something around Valentine's Day and I've been hanging on to them, they're so cute. And so I'm just gonna make her little heart molds. She doesn't want it scented or colored. I will use my kale and clay and my colloidal oats in there, but it's gonna be just really simple and pure and the breast milk will be the uh, entire portion of the liquid in this soap today. And I just wanted to address something really quick. The last time I made a breast milk soap, um, somebody stalked my daughter and told her she was starving her baby so that I could make soap. Well, <laughs> um, which of course we all know that's ridiculous, but I just want to say that this was extra milk. She is still currently breastfeeding. Baby is chunky and beautiful. And um, so baby is not starving for this soap. I'm just saying it, throwing it out there in case the same person's watching because he went and stalked her on social and shamed her and it was terrible. So shame on you, first of all, if you're the person who did that. <laughs> but I just wanna make it clear, baby has plenty of milk and breast milk soap is so wonderful for mom and baby. Personally, I wouldn't market this soap. I make it only for mother and child and that family. Um, so I don't know, some people think there's an ick factor. I don't, I am a huge proponent of breastfeeding. I breastfed all my babies and I, I think it's wonderful. If you're able to do it, I think it's great. So anyway, all that being said, I'm gonna get everything pulled together, get my hair pulled back and let's make some breast milk soap. All right, I have got my oils and butters all melted and cooling here and I'm going to add the dry additives for this super gentle soap uh, because this is a small batch I'm only going to add half a scoop of my kale and clay and I'll probably do three quarters of a scoop of the oats because I think it's really good and kind of goes along with this gentle mother's milk soap so I'm going to get this blended in and then I'm going to bring you along as I prep the breast milk and I'll show you how I add silk fibers to 100% milk soap. All right, what we've got going on here is my frozen breast milk. Here is my sodium hydroxide pre-measured out. And this is just a couple of ounces of warm water that I put my sugar into. And I'm gonna get it all melted in here. I'm gonna add my silk fibers in here and I'll just take a little bit of the lye to melt the, um, the silk fibers. And then I will start adding my lye very slowly into here. Actually, I can start doing that while my, while my sugar is dissolving. It just takes a, you know, a minute or two. I'm gonna add this very slowly. So just a little, and we're just gonna stir it around. And the way to keep a milk soap nice and a creamy color without it going that bright orange is slow. If you can go slow, you can keep it a light color. So that is the goal today because I'm not adding any additives and no TD. My daughter wanted a really natural, sorry, that noise. <laughs> sorry about that. <laughs> um, that's my spatula on the side of the container. Anyway, she wanted this unscented, uncolored, just really, really pure. Sorry about that noise. <laughs> it's kind of cracking me up. All right. So let that sit. Let me check on my little sugar over here. And you can, it's kind of that beige color because I use um, unbleached, uh, unrefined sugar, just natural cane sugar. All right, it's all dissolved. So now here is my container that I keep my Tessa silk fibers in. Um, I love mulberry silk also. When I run out of Tessa silk here, I'll probably replenish it with mulberry silk. So I just grabbed some wispy stuff. All right, I can't measure this, it has no weight, so I can't tell you how much, but if I mash it up, it's like a tiny little cotton ball size, about the size of my thumbnail. Um, so anyway, that's what it is, and I just sort of 
stretch it out and I'm gonna poke it in here. And now, um, because this is all of my sodium hydroxide, I don't have to worry about measuring or anything because this is, you know, all gonna go in here anyway. Okay. And I find that the silk fibers dissolve really well with just a little bit of lye. So this is a half teaspoon measure and I'm gonna see if that's enough to get this hot enough to melt that silk. And if it isn't, I just add a little more lye in there. And then what I will do is just set this off to the side until I get all that breast milk melted down. And this could be, you know, goat milk, cow milk, camel milk, whatever you wanna use, coconut milk, any frozen milk. Um, after you get your all your lye and it's melted, you can go ahead and just add your little water in there and I'm waiting for this to melt the silk fiber so okay here the silk got kind of it gets kind of um I don't know how to say like half melted almost gelatinous so it's not quite melted yet so I'll add a little bit more lime here just to heat it up a little more and go ahead and get it dissolved Time to add a little bit more lye on my frozen cubes here. All right, and you can see that this is clear and that uh, the silk went through that gelatinous phase and then it just sort of dissolves in the water. So I'm just gonna hold this off till I finish getting the rest of my lye in here. So even as slow as I was going, it started to yellow. So I went ahead and popped it in an ice bath here to finish off because the milk is all melted and I definitely don't want it to get any more warm. So ice bath it is. So I'm just gonna continue adding the lye until it's all incorporated in here. All right, we've got all the lye in here. And because it did start to yellow, I'm just gonna pour the water straight into here. I didn't wanna mix it in there because um, that water's not cool. So, here we go. And this does have some sodium lactate. I didn't grab that on film. Uh, I use sodium lactate at a rate of about one teaspoon per pound of oils, and I add it to my lye water. Um, you can add it straight into the oils. Uh, it's pretty flexible, but that's, that's how I do it. And that will help with the unmolding because these are going in little individual molds and I want them to unmold really nice and smooth. So there's the silk water, got the milk lye solution in there. So we are good to go. And I'm just going to blend this to a nice, you know, sort of medium to light trace and we'll get pouring. All right, it's been about 24 hours and I'm ready to pop these beautiful plain soaps out of the mold. 
Um, it just is so, sometimes just a simple, no bells and whistles soap is just divine. And that's what I think these are. All right, so let's see these little kind of, they're almost 3D-ish because they have a lip on the mold there. So let's get one of these out and see how it unmolds. And this is why I put the sodium lactate in. Oh, how cute is that? Let me see, I'm gonna pop this on my scale. So this is about three and a half ounces uncured. So I'll call these three ounce bars when they're cured. Aren't those pretty? Oh my word. All right, let me get a flower out here. And they're unmolding very easy because of the sodium lactate. And the recipe that I made, I'm not sharing the recipe I used today. This is my special uh, formulation. Uh, that I use for my breast milk soaps. But I will tell you, the video that I made on test batches, I show you how to formulate um, a soap recipe. These do have shea butter, cocoa butter, hemp seed oil, um, a lot of really emollient, very um, luxurious oils because I wanted them to be gentle and really luxurious. So that's how I went ahead and formulated. And I will link that uh, video down in the description box below where I share test recipes and how to formulate a recipe. Um, and so that's what I would recommend depending on the volume of milk you're using. So that's how I did. I took the volume of milk that I had and kind of used that as my springboard when I formulated. So, oh, I think these are just adorable and just pure and yet so luxurious. Sometimes you don't need all the fancy swirls to make it beautiful and wonderful and all that. I love these little flower molds. I got these from Amazon in like a three pack or something. I'll leave a link down below. And I just use these all the time. I grab them when I have extra soap batter or I'm doing frosting and I have extra. These little uh, flower molds are just wonderful go-to. And these are also about a three and a half ounce bar uncured. So they cure out to about a nice little three ounce bar. And they're just a perfect little guest soap party favor size bars. I love them. So these are unmolding really nice over here. I like that. And I just think they're so pretty. I'm going to have to revisit these hearts maybe with a swirl for a different soap because I'm really liking them. So there's no fragrance. There's nothing going on here. Just pure, simple mother's milk soap. And I, again, I'm going to post more pictures of my Precious new little granddaughter. This is my second granddaughter that, no, actually, yes, this was my second granddaughter. I now have three granddaughters. My son had a baby girl also. Oh, the grandkids, they're, they're coming and I'm loving it. Anyway, yes, this, the breast milk for this soap today was from my second granddaughter born. My oldest granddaughter was Zoe and we made soap together on an earlier video if you saw that. That was my very first grandchild and my very first granddaughter born. And so now the count is I have three granddaughters and two grandsons at this point in time. And I am loving the grandma life. I tell you what, it is, I highly recommend it. Being a grandma is pretty much the most awesome thing. <laughs> I'm absolutely loving being a grandmother. So I'm just going to keep unmolding these and, uh, Hope you enjoyed the video and have a wonderful day.